Okay, hello everybody. Um, so I got a bit more done uh, this, uh, since the last, I guess, uh, video. So we'll quickly go over that because uh, why not? Um, so we'll click the play button real quick. So mostly what I done, I um, did a bit more on the character and I did a bit more with the weapon. And I also started working on a new landscape material for the... Uh, the landscape in the uh, game, obviously. So as for the gun goes, um, we now have an attachment system. Um, it's somewhat rudimentary right now. It only supports a single optic and a single muzzle uh, device. And then soon I'm going to also revamp some of the animation stuff when it comes to the uh, uh, the carrying animation. Because I also want underbarrel mounts, like um, grenade launcher and stuff. So the left hand will be uh, modified based on like a, a third attachment. So that's cool. So we have, um, you know, the same old normal site. You can look down. And then with attachments, um, there's some logic that goes on in the um, when it generates the site transforms. That you can now switch to the attachments. And obviously this is like a PSO scope. And it has a uh, render target uh, to look through. Which is like um, like a second, re a second render of the game uh, view. Which obviously can then be zoomed in a bit. So you can have like a, th a 3D scope view, essentially, which is nice. It, it's a really cool effect. It's definitely a bit performance heavy compared to just squeezing the FOV with like uh, old like other style scopes, but it's pretty good. Cool. It looks, it looks nice. Yep, did a bit more. I revamped my um, relaxed pose for weapons. So now you can actually see the gun for the most part when you're running around without having to look down at it. And it's in a much nicer position when it comes to um, uh, the first person view. Before the gun was like lower, like the front of the gun was raised above the lower part of the gun. You're holding it in like a weird lower pose. Now you're holding it more in like a ready to go pose. So you're ready, ready, ready to quickly pull it back up because it's still tucked in your shoulder technically. Before it was much more lower. So now you can just, it looks more like you're actually just ready to go. Quickly. Plus it just looks better overall. So that's uh, nice. We've also got uh, the mantling system now is uh, moved over. So you climb onto shit. You know, smaller and larger mantle. <clears throat> so that's good. With a gun too, obviously. Yeah, and obviously if there was a couple bugs previously, so before you were able to just spin your head all the way around while you're mantling. I kind of hooked that logic into the um, when the head look logic. So right now I'm head looking, and I can't move my head behind the character. Same goes for mantling. So I mantle, my head's it's stuck. I can't move it any further. So I guess I fixed the bug while I was um, upgrading the system. <clears throat> And you saw earlier we have a very simple uh, weapon collision thing going on right now. So right now we're just doing a sphere trace um, from the from the character's head, and it is in and it is getting information from the gun you're currently holding to determine the length of the trace and everything. So then when you overlap, it just swaps from the idle animation to a raised animation, and you can't shoot obviously. So you're aiming, you go back, and you. Go back. <sighs> So like, oop, oh fuck, I'm overlapping, so you gotta pull out. Boop, and then go back. It works for the most part. And there's a little bit of clipping with the scope, just because PSO scopes are quite in your face. Like, if we go on uh, third person real quick, well, not really third person. The scope is literally in the guy's fucking face. I mean, there's not really much you can do about it. I can maybe pull the gun forward a little bit more for the holding position, but regardless, the scope gets pulled back quite far, because, yeah. I mean, there's no clipping for the most part here. You can head look and look into the scope, which is kind of funny, but um, that's a problem for another day. <laughs> yeah, so that's nice. We've got a few more attachments. We'll play with those real quick. Right now they're technically, like, I don't actually have the system set up for, um, adding them to the gun properly, we've just got some really simple shit, so attachment, we can do like a cobra sight, for example and 
play with that. And then it's the same shit. Oh, yeah, I got one sec. Uh, I haven't um, updated this scope yet. I can actually fix that right now. The uh, transform for the sight's kind of fucked up. <laughs> Let's see what that looks like. Oh, wait, what? Yeah, that looks really weird. You're holding it way too far out. <laughs> Let me fix that real quick, actually. So open the editor, check the attachment. The attachment has some values in the terms of uh, optics, so we can just set that to zero. This is the, the added distance on top of the base site. So now that's not being pulled eight meters forward. Now it's actually sort of in the better position. Yeah. So this takes over the base site. I'm still trying to swap to V and it doesn't work. So with all the optics, the attachments, whenever you add a new attachment or whatever, it will recalculate the, the optics, <clears throat> the, like the sights and everything for the gun. And that will then obviously take information from the site itself. So for example, this site overrides the base site. Yeah. And then you have a, whatever it's called, a uh, Cobra optic, because this is supposed to be your base optic versus the, um, which we call it attachment PSO, which is definitely not a. Like we can go to that real quick, and we will check on our defaults. We have literally settings, so it takes over the base site, and then we also have stuff for render targeting. <clears throat> so this one does not take over the base site. This one is. Uh, that's why the base site gets rendered first, essentially. So that's cool. You'll be able to obviously customize this whenever we start in the inventory system, and this is and this will be automatically generated from the inventory system. So um, you wouldn't be uh, just like doing that. That doesn't make any sense. <laughs> Red dot PT I think is Picatinny. So this one's going to be weird. Oh yeah, this one I forgot to update as well. Yeah, so we're going to have two different uh, styles. So for example, you have the Picatinny rail, which is you know, your generic, like, M4 type rail thing. Then you have the dovetail, which, um, AKs, modern, more modern-ish AKs. Well, call it, like, late Cold War AKs that. We'll fix this, too, because I will forget to, and I'll be like, oh, it's all broken, everything's fucked. Um, static mesh, and we go set that to zero as well. Oh, I think I did an eight for some weird reason for some bended fix it. Yeah, and maybe for the AKs as well, we'll have shit, we'll have like, um, I don't know, maybe I could do multiple attachments so you can act, because I know there are adapters, for example, like that are, they snap to the dovetail, and then they have a Picatinny rail on the top of the, um, adapter, and then you can put scopes, maybe I'll do that, and like Tarkov and shit like that, uh, games like that have, um, really cool stuff like that. I don't know, that's getting a bit more advanced. We'll see. Maybe we just have it... We, we just create AKs that have the rail on it. I don't know. That's really it for this video, I guess. So, uh... Attachment system... I guess we can look at the landscape material real quick. It's, uh, it's pretty nice. I mean, it's got a bunch of blending stuff now, so this is all... There's no decals or anything yet. These, this is just the landscape material with a bunch of detail here. Mainly because, um... I don't know, why not? I, I wanted to make a new landscape material, and this one looks pretty good, so... It was definitely a night well spent. Save that as well. Okay, so... Oh, too far. Okay, so landscape material. Um, I guess we'll just paint over because it doesn't really matter right now. So we'll just fill it with grass. And how this works, basically, uh, I don't actually, do I have a debug setting for this? I do. <clears throat> okay, so, we have our, your normal landscape layers you paint on, so we have grass, we have dirt, we'll paint some dirt there, some rock here, some concrete here, um, concrete alternate layer here for more, and then sand, but I actually haven't gotten around to adding that yet. And then forest, too. This is, uh, like, half done, essentially. We've got a few more layers to do, and then we're finished with this shit. So as you can see, we've got the the dirt, the um, rocks, concrete, and other types of concrete. So now how these are actually being 
uh, displayed, I think it's at the bottom. Yes, display color map. That's gonna compile more shit. Oh, it's a lot of stuff to compile. That's gonna be a second. So I'm basically using an RGB color map here to determine the actual distribution of uh, the textures. So here you can see, I need a good example. Yeah, so here, uh, actually they're all mixed in together. But anyway, so we have concrete A, B, and C, which are the, we'll go to the, are these named right? Uh, maybe not. Yeah, we'll have to fix our naming convention. But anyway, so we have three different uh, textures. So con A, B, and C textures, which then are on red, green, and blue uh, on the surface. So I should be able to just um, get rid of the color map. Yeah, no compile. So if you can look closely, we have that old same gravel texture we had uh, a while ago on the other map. Then we've also got this other bit of greenish texture mixed in. And then we have a full-on, like, sandy, like, dirt, like, and garbage. So we'll zoom out here a bit and just, I guess, remember where this stuff was. And now we display the color map. And as you can see, it lines up pretty perfectly. And we just flip it back and forth. Got that. It sucks it moves positions. But yeah, as you can see, blue is this, um, is this, like, dirty texture with some grass growing out of it and whatnot. So from here, what I can do is paint over that. So this is like the randomized generation for the layer. And each layer can potentially have different things. So here's the concrete layer. As you can tell, it's not this weird squiggly mess. It's a bunch of squares and other like random like normalized shapes, whatever. And then uh, rocks as well have a gigantic uh, one. So now I can go here and we have three different channels, red, green, and blue channel. And I'll just paint here real quick. And I, for example, want this whole th big patch to be red. So we'll paint over that. Now this whole thing's red. And if we go back to our regular view with the actual textures, we'll be able to see that um, only the red channel texture is being displayed. And now we can paint with this. So we'll paint off of the red. So now the red layer no longer exists. And I'm using this light layer because if, for example, we crank it up to maximum, so we're good using, we're turning this grass to this green channel, <clears throat> there's going to be an issue because these three channel layers don't actually have any texture associated with them. So they're basically being used to help influence the um, color map only. So we're only blending by 10% of what they normally would be. So you can go here and you can paint more like this if you want. <clears throat> and technically this may be cheaper in the long term, I think. But uh, if anything, it's going to be a lot easier for me to just have some pretty nice details um, without having to go in and manually add decals and other things. So it's kind of like a, a lazy man's fucking decal. And then I obviously when I'm not lazy, I will add on decals and shit and it'll look even better. Yep, so you can see there's the three different textures. There's the, this, um, kind of like broken up damaged concrete with some leaves on it. There is this more, I, I think this is actually a wall texture, <laughs> a concrete wall, like, uh, I'm using. And it looks pretty good because it almost looks like, you know, piled, like, chunks of, thing, of, uh, concrete. And then we have the third texture, which is this really, um, bumpy looking, uh, even more destroyed concrete. And far away, you can kind of see it. And then, obviously, really far away, it blends into the sad image. <clears throat> yep, so I'm quite happy with this. It's a good start. I'm probably also going to be trying to implement uh, runtime virtual textures into my landscape, which are basically, like, uh, in layman's terms, like a, a much more effective way of rendering uh, or doing, um, like, landscape texturing. And texturing for other, other things than just landscape, too, but... I would be primarily using it for the landscape because the non-real engine decals are um so for example i want to use decals for roads so i don't have like a 3d road mesh sticking out of the ground because those are very hard to make look nice so um using runtime virtual textures i can actually have a decal be a road so it's going to be flush with the landscape which is um in my opinion it looks better
Plus, I can do some other interesting shit with that. So, um, yeah, I'm looking forward to doing that in the near future. So, I guess that's definitely it now for this video. I'm just fucking playing around now. So, I'll paint some tiles on here. That's good. So, we have maybe concrete and then it blends the tile. And then we can also grab this channel stuff and make it specifically one, uh, one set. <clears throat> That's basically what this concrete alternate um, texture is for. So, for example, now I want to uh, actually we have to unpaint one layer before we paint on another because then there's going to be some weird overlapping issues. So we'll unpaint this, and then we will paint with green. So now um, we've got this little patch that is a um, like a solid piece with some dirt, and that's all uh, with the damage, not dirt. Same with there and there. So that looks pretty uh. Pretty good for just like a shitty landscape material when it breaks off like that. Alright, so thanks for watching everybody and I will continue to make these uh, bad videos of rambling and talking about shit. Okie dokie. See ya.